Hello, we're the marriage CEOs, Drs. Richard and Nefertina Serrano, and we have Covenant Rescue 911. Listen, it is a 24-hour hotline for married couples and families in crisis. If you are experiencing depression, infidelity, or anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, I want you to call the number on the screen right now so we can talk to you, we can pray with you, we can get you to a safe place. Please don't hesitate. Call that number right now on the, screen, on the screen, Covenant Rescue 911. It is a 24-hour hotline for married couples and families in crisis. We will talk to you soon. God bless you. And I mean that because that brought us so much closer together. We have a prayer room. If you don't have a prayer room, we have a prayer space. But find somewhere in your home that you can pray together. And make sure that you anoint one another. Adopt that into your home. And I'm telling you, you watch God move in your spiritual life and in your home. You start connecting with one another. You start knowing, because you know what? It's, it's a bad thing when you don't know how your spouse thinks. That's a bad place to be. I have friends that don't even know how much their wife make. That's bad, y'all. You know? How can you share space in your bedroom and you can't even share space in your own what? Bank account. Wow. How do you sleep together and don't have no space in your bank account to share? But yet you sleep together. Okay. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. Amen. If, you're, if you're married, you should be sharing everything. Yes. And I understand having separate bank accounts and that's fine. But you should not be unaware of the bank account. We have separate accounts, we have accounts together. But we're aware of our accounts that we have. Amen. So learn to share, learn to be humble, and learn to um, pray with each other, anoint one another. Excellent. Are you getting this? Amen. I hope so. Amen. Because this is the kind of stuff that's going to help. It's not going to stop you from having trials. It's not going to stop you from having tribulations. But it's going to help you that when they come, you're going to be like the woman of God. You're going to have patience. Yeah. You're going to have long suffering. Yeah. You're going to be able to understand. And you're going to be willing to listen and work with your spouse. Yeah. Why are you working against one another? Why? It doesn't have to happen. Another thing I want you to write down is the maintenance department. Just giving you a few departments in your home so you can think about it. We definitely, like the, the woman of God said, we don't want you to leave here the way you came. We want you to learn something. We want you to take something back, uh, some substance that you can work with. The maintenance department. Who takes care of the maintenance department at home? You know, some women are better at maintenance department than the men. That's right. Some women can paint better than men. Some people can hang doors. And, and you know, I, I see it in that, that what we see, the uh, the TV where they, um, yeah, flip the house and flop the house. You see some women work better than men. They got the belts on and they got everything. So that's why we said whoever's more qualified for the position. It's to, you know, today is not a man's job or a woman's job. It's whoever's qualified to do that position. That's how the house runs smooth. Because some men take care of everything else, but they can't do certain things. That's why she says some things have to be contracted out. Now, I don't cut the grass because I'm allergic to grass. So I subcontract that. Because guess what? It still has to be done. To certain things, some, I'm telling you, some people think, that it don't need to be done because you can't do it. That's not true. It needs to be done whether you can do it or not. It has to be done. If you don't know how to fold clothes, those clothes don't what? They're going to stand on the, stay on the bed? No. I've been washing clothes for about 10, 12 years. My wife says, you like washing clothes? I said, no. I don't like washing clothes, but I do it because it's a default. My wife hurts her her position in the home is really, she's the main cook. I do a prepping with her and I help her and I set tables and, and wash the dishes and all of that. But she's the main cook. So how can she cook? Now I'm not slow, listen man. How can she cook 
wash clothes, clean the house, and have time for me when I go to bed and I want to sleep. Right? 
in your life. In other words, God is offering you salvation through marriage. And the only way you can access these benefits through Christ, in any case, you do not really have a marriage corporation. That's right. If you don't ask. Because everyone has a marriage corporation who is married. All you have to do is put your last name to the corporation. Serrano's Corporation, you know, Smith's Corporation. Everyone has a marriage corporation in their home. That's right. Yes. When you're married, there's no benefits when you're not married. Yes. So the things you receive once you have partnered with a company, this, this is my tech, tech here right here. <laughs> Things you receive once you partner with the company is the, the, the acceptance and offer letter. But only when you accept the offer will they even go forward. So you have to really understand what you're accepting at that time. When you say, I do, you don't have to wait, as Deacon said earlier, for them to give you the benefits package. At the time, the I do, yes. you receive full benefits. In corporate America, they give you a little portion. As long as you're working there, they give you a little bit at a time. You accumulate so much up into a certain age. In marriage, there's no age. And you get it all on the first day. I don't know about you. Yeah. Okay, so just like the handbook you get, this is so awesome. God has downloaded this in us, and, and we've just been on cloud nine ever since. Just like the handbook you get in your corporate, and it has the procedures and the policies, so it has the structure of how you should act and the things you should do in corporate. God gives you the handbook, right? Instead of the representative of the HR department, it comes through the elder or the pastor of the church uh -huh. who's given you the Bible. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got it? Uh -huh. So that is your policy and procedures for your home, for your marriage. In that, it gives you, I don't know what they call it, but it's, uh, for us, of course, it's, it's, it's scriptures and it's Hello, everyone. We are the marriage CEOs, Dr. Richard and Dr. Nefertina Serrano, and we want to just let you know the book that we have that's out there in stores now. This is our book. Yes, we're releasing it this year. The Marriage Corporation. It is corporate strategies for fulfilling God's purpose in a covenant marriage. You want this in your life. It talks about the foundation of marriage, the institution of marriage, and why God instituted it so we can have good success in our relationships. You want to get this book and you can get it by. Pick up your copy today. You can go to our website www.themarriagecorporation.com. Thank you. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Yes. Who's the hearer? Your wife, your spouse. Yes. Your spouse. It's in the Word. Yes. You can't go wrong. Because they 
is so hurt. Yeah. That's what happens when you withdraw too early, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Don't withdraw too early. Yeah. Don't take that experience, the years, because you think you be something or you see something on the other side or the grass looks greener on the other side. You know, because sometimes we go through trials and tribulations and we want to take a withdrawal from our 501k and things like that. You better make sure it's an emergency before you take any money because you get penalized for taking that money. That's in corporate. In your corporation at home, if you withdraw too early, you might not make it back. And you're hurting somebody in the process, which means that you're responsible for your actions. Wow. That's right. Yes. Infidelity can be fixed. It's a process. It does become a new norm, which is different. Yeah. But you can make it even from that. So a lot of apologizing you have to do, a lot of reassuring you have to do. Yes. That's just like a person on drugs, and I've been there. Uh, Every time you leave the house, where are you going? They don't believe you. Yes. They think you're going to go behind them. That's what they think. But you got to say, you know what, I'm going to continue on. I'm gonna, no, I'm not getting hot. That's the same thing you got to do, baby. I'm fine. Put my phone down. Take it. Do what you want with it. Yes. You have to reassure that person that you're not going to do it again, that you are changed. Yes. you got to transform your mind. Yes. Yes. And you can't do it without God. You can't do it without God. God is your source. Yes. And let me tell you something, Miles Monroe, you love Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe said this. He said that the woman is not your source, but the, the God is your source. And if you don't like what the wife is giving you, let me give you an example. The, the woman is pregnant, she's developing, she's nurturing, she gives you a baby. It's the same thing when you give her things, when you say things to her. She's developing it, she's nurturing it, and she gives it back to you. So if you give her a house, she'll make you a home. Yeah. If you give her groceries, she will make you a meal. Yeah. But if you give her hell, she will give you damnation. And Miles Monroe knew something. He also said that if you don't like what your wife is giving you, you have to change what you're giving her. And that makes a whole lot of sense to me. A lot of stuff she's giving me is because of what I'm giving her. You have to change that. To know that we're giving her love, unconditional love, and communication, eye contact, those things that a woman wants and needs. That's right. But guess what? We need that too. We just don't really know it or show it. But it's things that we need that makes us feel better. Wow. I want to mention one thing as we're going to just get ready to close up because we want to uh, move out of the way. But there is uh, something that the woman of God said earlier, and I just want to touch on it a little bit. There's tragedy, 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 got it? Of cohabitation, pre-marital counseling. Listen. Cohabitation premarital counseling is to highlight the glaring differences between the increasingly popular institution of cohabitation. And this is totally at a variance with God's prescription for the joint existence of a man and a woman under the same roof and the true institution of marriage. So what are we talking about? Shacking up, right. shacking up, whether it's been one year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, but we've been together this long, what, where we get married, we might wind up divorced. Oh, or I had a friend who got married after being with his wife, with his wife for 10 years, and now they're divorced. 
you're looking at the wrong people. You're looking at the wrong people. Watch who you align yourselves with as a couple. Watch single people who you walk with as a single person. Because you become the company you keep. Married women and men, when you got issues going on in your household, be careful who you speak that to. One of the things that I learned and I, I, I really say I learned this as we went on, but I heard from some of the old mothers. Be careful how you speak about your husband, no matter what you're going through. That's not saying that you can't find someone that you know will not be partial. Because sometimes we're not thinking right. And sometimes we just want somebody to be on our side. When we really need someone to speak life to us. Somebody to be transparent and be real with us. And so be careful that you align yourself with people that will be real and tell you truth and love. Truth and love. Might mean your feelings get hurt. But they're going to stand there. Because I learned to love some of my friends in spite of them and in spite of me. There's tragedy in cohabiting, people. There's no benefits whatsoever. No benefits. There's none. He passed. They're going to say, um, your name is not on this. She passed. Listen. Listen to me real good. Because this is a true story. There was a young woman on our job who had one child and one child only. And when she had a heart attack after being home over the weekend, guess what? If you don't put your children's name on your stuff, it goes to Uncle Sam, mm. the one that did nothing for you, mm -hmm. the one that don't care nothing about you. Yeah. Don't be foolish and leave your hard earnings. Give it to charity if you have a child that you feel is not doing right. But don't just let it go to, no, to the abyss to be used however they so see fit. I just needed to say that. Put your husbands, don't assume that your husband or your wife get the money in your bank account. Amen. That's true. You have got to, even if they're not on there as a joint That's right. person, Absolutely. you have to tell them that this is who you want that money to go to. Absolutely. They automatically get it. That's what you got to do. Yes, you do. Amen. Amen. So Hallelujah. be careful. Yes. I don't know about you, but I work too hard. I know that's right. I work too hard. The greater tragedy of, of cohabitation is that the Bible specifically warns against fornication. No covenant benefits to be derived from it. It is also a reproach in the life of its partakers. In Psalms chapter 127 and verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain, and unless the Lord watches over the city, the guard stand watch in vain. In vain. I just want to give you another verse. Proverbs 11, 14. It's so important. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of safety, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Read your manual, look at the procedures in your manual. It will guide you and guide your home into a better place, into a loving place, into an unconditional love place, into the oneness where God wants everyone, every married couple to be. Amen. Thank you so much. There's one, one thing while you're standing to your feet, yes, because pastor is coming. In the benefits, you need to understand 
than by the simple virtue of committing yourself with the golden words, I do. You have automatically invested 100% into your union. That's good. Winning in your marriage. Build on the right foundation. God first. Planning and organizing your home. Gotta have some structure, people. Hello everyone, we are the Marriage CEOs, Dr. Richard and Dr. Nefertina Serrano, and we wanna just let you know the book that we have that's out there in stores now. This is our book, yes, we're releasing it this year, The Marriage Corporation. It is corporate strategies for fulfilling God's purpose in a covenant marriage. You want this in your life. It talks about the foundation of marriage, the institution of marriage, and why God instituted it so we can have good success in our relationships. You want to get this book and you can get it by. Pick up your copy today. You can go to our website www.themarriagecorporation.com Thank you.